Hello everybody. What weird times we're living in, right? Um, <laughs> thank you for your patience with uh, me and the rest of your teachers as we try to figure out how the heck to do this whole remote learning thing. Um, today for, for science, um, it's probably going to be a two-day thing. I'm probably going to have to cut this in half. Um, we're going to be going through a presentation that I usually do in class, and it's kind of interactive, and I've got some hands-on things, um, but obviously we can't do all that right now, um, so we'll just sort of have to make the best of it. Um, we need to talk about sexual and asexual reproduction, so I know we got to think it feels like it was forever ago since we've actually been in class talking about this stuff, but um, maybe a month or so ago uh, we had been talking about meiosis, which is the process of making sex cells. So we've sort of talked a little bit about sexual reproduction. We know how moms and dads combine their genetics with a sperm and an egg, and then it makes baby and all that good stuff. We made our dragon babies through sexual reproduction. We had a mom and a dad and they made a baby. Um, but we would need to talk a little bit about asexual reproduction. And so that's sort of what we're gonna be doing today. Now, I did link this document as well in your assignment. Um, Normally I would have this printed and have it handed out and you'd, you'd fill it in. Uh, if you have a printer at home, I would do that. I would print this out um, and fill it in as we go through. If you don't get everything filled out, it's not a huge deal. Um, just sort of fill out what you can. Um, if you don't have a printer, that's okay, but I would maybe keep this open in another tab and look at it occasionally. I'm not going to be able to do that, So, um, and I also don't have a printer at home, so I can't refer to it as I'm working um, and, you know, to tell you what to fill in, but maybe just keep an eye on it. Um, I'll tell you when the, the most important, you know, words and things like that are. To look at this back here, this is sort of a Venn diagram that in class when we talk about it, I have you fill things out. So um, we talk about all these different animals here, Burmese python, cat, apple tree, obviously that's not an animal, we talk about different organisms, tree frog, pine tree, all this stuff. We talk about all of them and we decide are they sexual reproducers, asexual reproducers, or do they do both? And we would fill in all these terms in this Venn diagram. Um, if you want to, if you have the printer and you're printing this out, awesome, do that. Um, but if you're not printing it out, um, just maybe keep it in mind, maybe even just draw this Venn diagram in your notebook and, and throw these things in there as we go. We're going to go through all of them. Uh, and we'll talk about what's what, right? Um, you'll notice too, there's some terms in here. So one parent, does that mean sexual or asexual reproduction? Two parents, does that indicate sexual or asexual? So there's some terms in addition to the organisms that we'll talk about. All right, uh, I think that's about all I needed to tell you there. Um, yeah, let's get to it. So. sexual or asexual reproduction, how do living things reproduce? So with sexual reproduction, um, first thing that you need to know is that it is reproduction with two parents. By the way, you should have taken your notebook home. If you didn't take your notebook home, just grab some paper and we can shove it in your notebook um, when we get back to school or whatever. Um, it's helpful to write this down somewhere if you can. So sexual reproduction is reproduction with two parents. Pretty basic, right? Uh, and that is in contrast to asexual reproduction, which you may already know or you may be able to guess, it involves just one parent. There's a lot of different ways that this can happen, um, and we're going to talk about some of those ways today. It's pretty interesting. Living things do some very interesting things. Um, that's why I love talking about this. So sexual is two parents. Asexual is just one parent. Okay, so offspring are different from a parent. Does this apply to sexual or asex asexual reproduction? Well, I usually say, let's think about ourselves, humans. We all know that we were produced sexually. We have a mom and a dad. We have two parents. Do we look exactly identical to our parents? Some of us probably look pretty close. Some of us might look kind of close. Um, but chances are you don't actually look identical because... You're a mixture of two different genes, uh, two different sets of genes. So if offspring are different from their parent, that means sexual reproduction. Okay. Uh, on the other hand, if you are identical to your parent, then that means, sorry, <laughs> actually, Mr. K just texted me. Weird, right? 
Um, if you are identical to your parent, that means you are reproduced asexually because you only have one set of genes uh, affecting what you look like, right? Uh, produces offspring. Can you reproduce offspring both sexually or asexually? Yes. So both. Now, again, if you're doing the Venn diagram, you, you just filled in a couple things there, right? Sorry, I'm trying to make sure my phone doesn't go off again. I'm getting distracted here. Okay, sorry. So apple trees, we need to think about do they reproduce sexually, asexually, or both? Um, usually in class, this is the point where I would have you raise your hands to take a vote, and I would probably tell you all that you are wrong um, because they reproduce both ways. Um, they reproduce sexually through their flowers. We talked before about how flowers are sexual organs. Um, and then they also reproduce asexually through a thing called vegetative propagation. Now, being that this is underlined, that probably means that's something you should write down. That's usually a good clue, right? So you might want to write down vegetative propagation. Or um, if you have the printer, that's going to be filled in on your sheet. So let's talk about what vegetative propagation is. Oh, and I gave you a specific um, instance of grafting. We're going to talk a little bit about grafting. There's a couple different types of vegetative propagation that we're going to talk about. Grafting is the first one. Um, first, let's talk about flowers. I'll quickly review how flowers are sexual organs. Again, this is something we've talked about before, but just to refresh your memory. Um, remember, this doesn't apply to all flowers, but most flowers have both a uh, female part, that's this part right here in the middle there, and then they have a male part, that's this part up here, these little um, brown things. Um, the little brown things produce pollen. Remember, a bee will land on the flower. They're eating the nectar down here at the base of the flower. Um, bees have little fuzzy, furry bodies. They pick up that pollen from one flower, they fly over, land on the next flower, and they deposit some of that pollen right here onto the female part here. That pollen moves its way down to where the eggs are down here. They fertilize the eggs, which makes seeds. Um, and actually, when you're eating an apple, whoops, when you're eating an apple, you're actually eating, um, see that where this says receptacle here, that, that's sort of where the seeds go. You're eating the swollen um, flesh of the apple tree, really. You're eating essentially a swollen ovary. Um, which I know seems sort of weird, um, but it's it's a it's actually pretty effective for a lot of plants. If you think about it, um, you know when when you or I eat an apple, uh, we you know leave the seeds and the core to the side. We don't eat that, right? But think about an apple tree out in nature. What's going to eat apples out in nature? Maybe a deer. Okay, so. Does a deer eat around the core of an apple like humans do? No, the deer just eats the whole apple. Okay, they eat the seeds and all. Well, the whole point of an apple tree putting its seeds in the middle of that apple is when that deer eats that apple, okay, it takes those seeds from the apple and it walks across the forest and it poops <laughs> those seeds out and it essentially plants an apple tree somewhere far away. If all the apple tree, or if, if all the apples just fell straight off the tree and fell right next to mama tree, and all the apple trees were just trying to grow right underneath mama tree, mama tree wouldn't be very happy and neither would babies, right? Because trees need light, they need sunlight. All these babies are trying to grow in the shade of mama tree. Uh, those babies are trying to suck up some of the water that mama tree wanted. So flowers are helpful for apple trees because. They make seeds inside of apples that uh, essentially get their seeds further away um, to, to spread their babies out further. Anyways, sorry. Y'all know I like flowers. I like plants. I like talking about this stuff. Let's talk a little bit about grafting. This is kind of an interesting process. So when we first look at this, um, a lot of people get kind of confused. You'll see this sort of cut branch and you'll see these twigs. And a lot of times people think, well, someone cut the branch and the tree is sort of like growing out from that. But that's not quite what happened. What somebody did is actually cut this branch off here, obviously, and they actually put some slits underneath the bark. 
and then they took twigs from another tree and they slid them underneath that bark there. Um, kind of imagine like, well, yeah, they just sort of shave the edge of the twig down and shove it underneath the bark. Now eventually what will happen, and this stuff on the end is like a waxy coating. It's kind of like a band-aid, like a tree band-aid to protect it from getting infected and stuff. Trees can get infections too. Um, so eventually the trees, the, the branch here and the twigs that they put onto it will actually heal together. Um, and then these little twigs will be a new part of this tree. Well, why the heck would anybody want to do that? That seems sort of silly, right? Cut off a branch in order to add a bunch of twigs. Well, here's the thing. Um, think about it this way. If an apple is produced sexually, right? That's going to be a combination of mom's and dad's genes. Now, remember, going back here to this flower diagram, I said this green part down here, this is essentially what gets big and swollen and, you know, red if it's a red apple or whatever. And that's the part that you actually eat. So this part right here is always going to be essentially from mom flower, right? Because dad's pollen came from some other flower somewhere else. That's the pollen that made it into here. Okay. This, this little male part doesn't actually fertilize this flower here. So essentially you're eating part of this tree. Now, if you take one of these seeds, those seeds has half of the DNA of this tree and half of the DNA of whatever tree that pollen came from. Okay, so half DNA from this tree, half DNA from another. Say this apple was really delicious, okay? What you're saying is that this tree right here was delicious, essentially. The tree that produced that apple is good at making delicious apples. If you take these seeds, only half that DNA is from that good tasting tree. Okay, so if you take, if you plant those seeds, you may not get um, as good of a tasting of an apple. So what people do is they essentially take this part right here, which they know produces good apples, that's what they'll cut off and stick onto the new tree because they know that this twig makes good apples. Okay, so they're going to take that twig, put it onto this nice healthy tree, maybe, maybe the tree is dying, right? And the, the tree that you know produces good apples, maybe that tree is dying. So before it's all the way dead, you chop off some of its twigs, put it onto a new tree so it still continues surviving. Um, that's how really most apples are produced. Now, occasionally we're going to get new varieties, right? And that's a combination of genes. People are still planting these mixture of mom and dad genes, um, you know, trees and um, seeing if they taste good. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. That's how we get new apple varieties. Um, but if you know that you want a red delicious apple tree, you essentially need to graft on red delicious apple tree twigs to what's called your root stock. This, this tree we know has good roots. It's a good solid trunk. It's healthy. Um, and we know that these twigs produce good fruit. So we want to combine those um, so that we can get the best of both worlds. It's kind of complicated. Um, something fun here. This is all on one tree. Obviously we've got um, all a bunch of different colors. Apples, by the way, here's sort of your definition of grafting. It's just transplanting living tissue. So on back on this picture, this uh, these twigs are living tissue. Uh, we transplanted them from whatever tree they came from. We transplanted them onto uh, this tree here. Okay. Uh, what's cool, I've always wanted to do this to be honest. Um, you can take one rootstock and put onto it, I don't know, Red Delicious and Granny Smith and uh, Golden Delicious and Honey Crisp and whatever type of apple you want. You can have uh, all those apples all growing on one tree just because you grafted twigs from a variety of trees. So I think that's kind of cool. I've, this is a this is all a picture of one tree here. Um, yeah. You're probably pretty bored right now, right? Well. I figured I'd break up your monotony a little bit because I've also been bored. I'm breaking up my monotony. I decided to come and spend the morning out here at my local skate park. This is O'Brien's skate park. And, uh, you know, get a little bit of exercise, whatever. You might be thinking, is Miss Richard very good at skateboarding? And I would say, no, I'm not. But I bet that I'm better than you. If you want to prove me wrong, I want you to send me a video of yourself skateboarding. It doesn't have to be here. Ooh, 
can be down your street, can be anywhere you can. But if you send me a video of you skateboarding, I'm gonna shout you out on canvas. So get outside, get active. This is still quarantined, right? Do you see anyone within six feet of me? I don't. I'm still quarantined and I'm still having fun. So get out there, skate, send me the video. Figured I'd prove to you that I'm actually skating. So here we go. <laughs> All right, back to the lesson. Neat stuff. All right, moving on. Bacteria. The, do you think they reproduce sexually or asexually? Bacteria are strictly asexual. Okay, they use a thing called fission, specifically binary fission. Um, you may have heard of nuclear fission. Fission basically just means cutting something in half. Nuclear fission is when you split an atom, you split the nucleus of an atom. Um, so bacterial fission is splitting a bacteria in half. It's when a single celled organism divides into two identical daughter organisms. It's very similar to mitosis, um, making you know two cells out of one. Um, but bacterial cells are a little bit different than um, eukaryotic cells, so they have a slightly different process. Um, here I just showed that. Now one one important the difference between bacteria and so bacteria, what we're looking at here, and then, for instance, human cells, which we looked at before when we were looking at mitosis. Um, bacterial cells don't have a nucleus, okay? So they don't have to deal with all that. Remember when we were doing the thing, we had the dotted line because the nucleus was dissolving, and then we had a new dotted line over here because the nucleus was forming again, and we had, you know, the chromosomes coming apart, whatever. Bacteria don't really have chromosomes. They just have one big sort of clump of DNA that's called the nucleoid. So that DNA still replicates, um, but they essentially just move to opposite sides and they split in half like uh, um, telekine or tele telekinesis. Tele yes, telekinesis. <laughs> no, telephase. I knew that word was wrong. Telephase. Gosh, it's late, guys. I'm sorry. This would be telephase. This would be cytokinesis. Um, you know, these two would sort of be set of pieces. Anyways, looks very similar to mitosis, a little bit different. Basically, it's mitosis, but bacteria do not have the nucleus to divide. Okay, uh, so that's bacterial fission. It is asexual. You have one parent and you have two identical, we call them daughter cells. Okay, one parent, two kids. All right. I think probably the last one we're going to talk about today is the Burmese python. Uh, so what do you think? Sexual, asexual, or both? Turns out Burmese pythons can use both. So sexually, we're not going to talk about that egg, sperm. You, you know the basics of that, right? Let's talk about this thing, parthenogenesis. And if you have the printout, uh, you have a little thing for that. Parthenogenesis literally means virgin birth, okay? So basically what can happen normally out in the wild, Burmese python, um, you know, would probably do the normal thing, right? You've got, uh, here's your, let me make sure I'm not lying to you here. Okay, here's your, here's your egg, here's your sperm comes into the egg, right? And you have mom represented with black here, dad represented with red. Normally, then that would create the baby, right? So that's your sexual reproduction of the Burmese python. However, a lot of animals have just sort of this internal thing that says, I need to make babies. We've sort of talked about that before. Um, my whole point in life is to make babies. If I die without having made a baby, then, you know, that's, that's basically just not good, right? Um, now, for one, I want to say humans are different. Um, <laughs> a lot of people don't want to have babies, and that's fine. That's perfectly fine in today's crazy world. Um, but animals are more, for lack of a better term, animalistic, right? Um, so for a lot of animals, it's, hey, I need to make a baby. Let's get this done. If a male isn't around, 
to give a sperm to make a baby the quote unquote normal way, okay, through sexual reproduction, a female can say, all right, look, there ain't no guys around here, right? I just need to take care of this myself. I need to make a baby before I die. I'm going to die soon. Let's get this done. So instead of having half a set of DNA from mom and half a set of DNA from dad, essentially what mom does is she sort of takes two of her eggs. So half set of mom DNA, half set of mom DNA, and she combines them to make a baby with essentially two half sets of her own DNA. So her own DNA. This is basically entirely mom's DNA here. Okay. That's why it's called virgin birth because no sex actually has to happen. If you are thinking about Christianity here, no, the Virgin Mary did not do parthenogenesis. She's not a reptile. She can't do that. Okay. Um, if you want to talk about that more, you can email me. I'm going to leave it there. So that's parthenogenesis. Instead of having egg and sperm, you essentially have egg and egg come together. This is a special thing that reptiles can do. Reptiles can do some uh, interesting things. All right. We're going to cut it off there. We're going to come to cats tomorrow and we're going to finish up uh, tomorrow. All right. So um, again, write anything down in your notebook that you need to. If you got any questions on what we're doing, uh, go ahead and shoot me an email. Um, and don't forget about that challenge that I mentioned.